in a world where extreme competition exists everywhere. What does it take to have success in your career and in life? Join me, Nirvana Chaudhary, as I sit down with some of the most successful individuals to discover the secrets to the success, what continues to drive them, and to hear a few exclusive stories in the process, what drives them and their success code, their mantra for making it bigger. Hello everyone, I'm Nirvana Chaudhary back again with my podcast, Making It Bigger. Today I have with me an adventure activist, but more importantly, a very, very dear friend of mine. I, I don't even know how to start his introduction, but let me just quickly try to summarize it. 52 expeditions, 172 countries, 3000 nights in tents. He is an advent, uh, environmental explorer, adventurer, Grand, Grand Slam, Guinness World Record holder, Mount Everest summit here. He summited the seven summits, North Pole, South Pole, World Sailor, Pole to Pole, Explorers Club, Climate Neutral Expeditions, and he's been on the cover of Time magazine. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so fascinated. I'm so happy to be welcoming my brother, Johan Ernst Wilson. Johan, thank you so much for coming to this podcast. It's my biggest honor. Uh, it's uh, it's an honor to be. You're such an ins, ins, inspiration to me and to many. So I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's my biggest honor. So Johan, the first thing I all, always ask, you know, uh, leaders who come in my podcast, you've done all these activities. I, I mean, I'm honored that I mean, even one iota an inspiration to you. You are an inspiration not only to me but to a lot of people, right? What is your success mantra? What is it that keeps you going? I think that I'm a little bit obsessed with the word impossible. <clears throat> I believe that impossible is a word that we have invented. It doesn't exist in the nature, in the animal kingdom, in the nature. The, the word impossible doesn't exist in evolution, in everything, in transformation. Impossible is a word that humans have invented because we need the word explaining things that we don't understand. We need a word when we hit the wall, when we cannot explain something, we need something a word to explain that, that is impossible. That doesn't mean it cannot be done. It just means that we doesn't know how it works. Everything around us now was impossible 1,000 years ago. Everything that we can envision or, or, or imagine will be standard in 1,000 years. So with time, everything slowly becomes possible. So everything is possible. The impossible just takes more time. So I'm obsessed with the word impossible because I think that children in schools today, they must grow up with the concept of understanding that things are possible, that they should not let the parents and the teachers limit them to say that you cannot do this, you cannot do that. Everything is possible. And I've been obsessed in proving people wrong through my 30 <laughs> years of exploration around the globe. No, absolutely. Actually, impossible has the word I am possible, right? And it's, exactly. it's, it's, it's amazing. You're absolutely right. Sometimes we think about, um, like you said, 100 years ago, going to space. Impossible. Today, you're talking about, you know, tourists flying to the space now, right? I guess it's just a matter yeah. of time and matter of perspective. And you're just continuously, I think, setting a higher benchmark for yourselves and proving to everyone what is the possibilities of human endeavor and dream. Tell me, Johan, you know, one thing I'm... Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. So, so I just want to say that there are some people say that, like, you know, if you take, like, you leaders and people around in your in your position, people say, yeah, well, it's easy to say that, you know, you can do that, you know, because, you know, you, you have the background, the funds, this and that. Yeah, but look at Gandhi. Gandhi didn't have anything, and he changed everything. Or all the, all the political biggest leaders or, uh, you know, the little Swedish girl, Greta Thunberg, or like, you know, you have like re religious leaders. So it's not really true. You don't really need money, power, everything. You just need the concept of saying that I want to make a change today. If 8 billion people say the same thing at the same time, we will change the entire planet. So it's not really true that you need power, this, everything, but the communication and the internet platform has made it so much easier for people to make a change. And people that normally would never get heard get a voice. So I believe that through technology and internet, we can change the world. We just need to change our mindset. If you believe that you're going to wait for someone else to do it for you, 
this, it's never going to happen. You need to start with you. You need to change the mindset. If you do it, other people will get inspired, uh, not inspired, inspired, and we will change the world. <laughs> Absolutely, Yohan. I think that's what Gandhi also said, right? Be the change you want to see. That's exactly what yeah. he said, and that's what you are just echoing. Uh, Yohan, you know, there's one thing whenever I, I listen to you and I really get amazed with, and I really want to capture this in my podcast, is I just, if you can share with me once again, you know, the story of uh, a young I lad. I know. You just I need know. to, I think everyone just needs yeah, to hear it. So, 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 so it was, so I do a lot of public speaking, a lot, a lot of coaching. And this little boy called me up and said, listen, we are following your TED talks and things. Can you, can you coach me? I said, okay, fine. What's the background? Well, you see, I, I got cancer and I, you know, for my spine and down, I'm paralyzed. I cannot move. And it really took my life away, my energy away. I don't know how I'm going to live anymore. I have no inspiration. I, I just, I just want to find it again. You know, I want to you know, recoup my energy. And I said, okay, fine. So here's the coordinates where we're going to meet. He's like, coordinates? I thought we we're going to meet at the cafe. No, this is coordinates we're going to meet. <laughs> okay, fine. So he looks it up on the internet. This is not Stockholm where he was living. Like, no, this is the Arctic. That's correct. It's a mountain. Yes. It's the highest mountain in Sweden. Yes. It's 2,000 meters. That's also correct. I'm in a freaking wheelchair. But that's not my problem, is it? I'm going to start the coaching on this mountain. If you want my coaching, this is where I'll be. Yeah, but I have the wheelchair. I carry the wheelchair. Where am I going to sleep? I carry the tent. How am I going to finance this? I finance this. But you, you're going to crawl. So I made him crawl for a week with his arms, dragging his legs behind him. And we come up slowly to the summit. And we sit there at 2,000 meters. His tears comes down and it's bleeding in his hands. And he sits there and looks at me with anger and despair, saying that, okay, fine. We're on the summit now. I did that. Can we start the coaching now? I said, well, that was the coaching. <laughs> you, know, and you know, every time I listen to this, I get like goosebumps. Seriously, it's, it's, it's in- incredible, the power of, you know, moving the human mind as well as determination and courage. And you're doing that. You want to tell so, me. Yeah, so, 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 so I just want to add something. In the beginning, I was sitting down and thinking, I'm going to do a coaching program. And at the end of the year, we're going to go to Mount Kebnekaise in the Arctic and we're going to climb the mountain. And I'm like, no, we're going to start with that. <laughs> and then we do Kilimanjaro and then we do Elbrus and then you're going to freaking ski to the South Pole. So I was like looking at the schedule and I was looking at the end of the timeline after the year. This is the mountain we're going to climb at the end after one year of coaching. And I just took the pen and I just changed the whole timeline around. No, no, no. We're starting with that. <laughs> and then we go forward. Oh, wow. Amazing. Things things you make people do, you know, pushing the boundaries continuously. Johan, you know, you've been, uh, I mean, you're, you're the brand ambassador for Leo DiCaprio Foundation. You won some prestigious awards, you know, the Prince of Monaco uh, Award. Amphar, you're associated with WWF. I, I keep seeing amazing way you're advocating, you know, even the the, the rhinoceros uh, nose project, you know, the horns yeah, yeah. that are being uh, smuggled in. I mean... So Snow Leopard Foundation. Snow Leopard. Now, you know, so, so, so my take on this is that um, nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. Exactly. So I, so I believe that if we all do something, and I was saying before, if we all have the mindset of I'm going to wake up this morning and I'm going to do something good. I'm going to do something. I'm going to make some change for the world to be a little bit better. If we have that mindset then we can do so amazing things. So my mindset with, with the whole philanthropy world is that if I have in the voice as I'm speaking to you or interviews or, you know, magazines and things, if I have a voice to do something, I, it's my responsibility of sharing that media time or that uh, time at the dinner to share something. Not only that I've climbed Mount Everest, is that why did I climb Mount Everest? What did I find on Mount Everest? How can we change the mindset? How can we change the rules and regulations? Everything I do, I try to add something activism to it. If I cross Antarctica, if I do whatever, I need to add an aspect to it. And I think that in the business world, we all need to do the same thing. Everything we do, we should have a little clause on the side saying that we do this project, but 
This is also leading to something on the side that makes something good. It might not be a big thing, but if we all do that, we will change the world. Yeah, I mean, I I clearly remember, you know, you and commemorating the the handgun, right? And you and I think Paul McCartney and I think there was one more celebrity was asked to paint. Was it who was the other one? Paul McCartney. Yeah, it was, uh, it was Muhammad Ali. It was um, so Muhammad Ali did it. Paul McCartney did it. Ringo Starr and I did it. Yeah. So again, you're already sitting in the you know platform of the stars of the world, right? Like my my earlier question, which you answered really well, was uh, you're sitting in a position of influence, and why aren't we being able to make these changes and these differences? And you answered already to that question, saying you don't have to do everything. You can just focus on one thing and do it. You know, uh, Johan. Tell me, you have been coming to Nepal for 25 years. You've been yeah. you you've really been a true brand ambassador for Nepal. You've been promoting Nepal. I mean, the kind of uh, people, your friends who you bring to Nepal are, are people who are the again become spokespeople or ambassadors of this country, right? I mean, are you seeing changes happening in Nepal's mindset? Do you feel we still have a long way to go? What should we as a country capitalize on? You know, we talk about hydropower tourism, but Yes, so so I would say it's not really it's not really fair and it's not really a sport and it's not really hard to promote Nepal because Nepal promotes itself. I just need to open the door. I don't need to sell it, I don't need to promote it, I don't need to do anything. The only thing I need to do is saying you come to Kathmandu and Kathmandu will take care of you. You come to Himalaya and the nature will show you the magic. So I feel a little bit embarrassed because it will be much, much more of, of a challenge to take other countries. But now it's just happy to be Nepal. But as I said, I get people there. They, I open the door and they say, we wouldn't have come here if you wouldn't have invited me. But the people, the Sherpas, the Nepali, the mountains, the culture, the food, the love, the, the everything is just the most amazing country. So I did two years ago, I brought the whole film team and I, and I did eight one hour shows about Nepal, about eight celebrities coming to Nepal. And I'm doing the same thing in April again. So in April again, I'm bringing eight celebrities with a whole TV team of 20 people. And we're doing eight new documentaries about Nepal. So I'm trying to, everything I do, I'm trying to get Nepal to be a part of people's everyday understanding and life. Because Nepal, I think is a role model about how people should be in the world, how people treat nature, how people treat each other, the culture, everything. So I want people to go to this little country between the two big blocks and understand that this is the one we should look at, not the south, not the north, the one in the middle. That's the one who sets like, you know, like the basic of everything. That's amazing. You know, there's so many questions uh, I want to ask you, Johan, but I want to really from, on behalf of Nepal, I really want to thank you for what you're doing. And I'm sure in the near future, you know, Nepal as a country should be formally recognizing your efforts for all these years and being a true brand ambassador, right? Uh, I've got many questions, but I've got one which is just completely going on in my head. You've done North Pole, South Pole, and I gave in the introduction, right? What next? So, So I also believe that after doing as you said, 3,000 nights in a tent, eight and, a half, eight and a half years of my life in tents, and uh, 178 countries, I think it is now, and all over the world. I think that one of the biggest exploration we can do today is an inner journey. It, it's not only, uh, so I go back to Nepal the whole time. People say, yeah, why do you go back? Because I discover new things within myself the whole time. So I think that the exploration that we are doing now, if you would ask, for example, names, if you would ask uh, Hillary or whoever, what was your biggest knowledge or, or, or exploration on the mountain, it wouldn't be the logistic or the climbing, it would be the understanding of your own powers and your own philosophy, everything, that will change your mindset. So I think that the exploration 2.0 will be no matter what you do, I have a lot of expeditions coming up, but it's not the actual expedition, it's what I learn and how I can help that area to be more exposed in the world. So for example, if I have a new expedition coming to Nepal, it's not about the actual climb, it's about how I, how I will present it to the world and how people can learn from it. 
So I believe the new exploration will be a 2.0, the inner understanding. So exploration is not a geographical journey. Exploration is an inner discovery of your own true potentials. Fantastic, Johan. Inner engineering, right? You know, frankly speaking, I thought, you know, I see you underwater with a blue whale. <laughs> or I think you, I, I thought you're going to say, you know what? I think now I've got to go and explore the space, right? And the, and I think your your entire uh, answer is so profound because I've seen you being drawn into spirituality over a period of time. And I think that's one of the first steps towards understanding yourself and the inner in engineering, right? Johan, I, I, you know, I want to keep this short because I know a lot of people like I will learn so much and will keep this podcast close to my heart. Uh, brother, thank you so much for taking out time. This has been absolutely amazing. I look forward to seeing you in Nepal very, very soon. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you so much.